On today's live stream, my guests are Chad and Joe from the Connections for Life webcast. Chad, Joe, and I will have a conversation on the five characteristics of a LinkedIn influencer. Okay, let's get this build out with Jim Kunkel Live started. Chad, Joe, welcome to the live stream. What's going on, Jim? Hey, Jim. It's going right. pretty good, pretty good. I'm uh, so real excited to have both of you on uh, Build Out with Jim Kunkel. Uh, you know, we've been communicating for uh, a number of months, and, uh, you know, our introduction obviously was done during the, the time of the pandemic. And it's just in the early, in the pre stream, we were talking about how things were starting to, you know, get back to normal and everything like that. Yeah. Slowly, <laughs> slowly but surely. Yeah, it's uh, it's been interesting. I mean, I think it's it was weird. I, I think coming into the pandemic, right? Because we're on the outside sales guys, and we kind of didn't know what to do with ourselves, and that's where we started with connections. But I mean, coming out of it now, it's it's kind of hard to go back. Um, it's a little different to try to get back into the groove that you had prior to uh, you know March twenty twenty. So I'm not very efficient yet. <laughs> you never. <laughs> <will>. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. It's it's different. It's different driving in a car. And now, you know, I spent the last year in, in front of a computer being able to do these things pretty easily. Now you get in a car, I can still do it, but I don't feel safe staring at somebody through my phone while I'm driving. So, you, you know, know yeah, tougher. when I when I hit the, you know, the Walmart and I walk in, you know, I've, I'm fully vaccinated. I walk into Walmart and I'm waiting for someone to yell at me for not having a mask because I'm so I used know. to putting that mask on. Right. Going into, so, weird. Uh, again, I appreciate both of you having you on, uh, on the, um, on the stream here today. Let's talk a little bit about connections for life webcast. And I'm real curious about the origin story of your program. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll call that to chat. <laughs> so you can drink your coffee. Thanks, Joe. There he is. Yeah. So, um, Essentially, with Joe and I both work for, for Upsco Incorporated. We're a prefabricated meter set manufacturer up in upstate New York. That's my one shameless plug. There it is. You'll probably have a few more. Um, that's, there's not one. But uh, <laughs> but essentially, we're like Joe kind of said, we're both outside sales guys. And uh, our, our third member who couldn't make it here today, he's uh, – he's a shout out to Teddy. He's down under the weather. But uh, it, when all this stuff happened in March and, and we were kind of put in our houses, we didn't really know what to do. And I think – you know, I had a, I had a podcast with my neighbor for uh, for about a year before that that it never took off. We had a great great time doing it. We talked about some funny stuff, and Joe had been on uh, Joe had, Joe had been a guest, and and a lot of our friends in the industries that had actually been guests on our podcast across the street. So when this happened, I, I was like, hey, we need to do something different. Let's let's you know, really really the concern, which is funny, was trying to stay relevant to make sure that we were doing something because we're so, most of our time was spent, you know, Joe himself probably, I mean, he would leave on Monday, come home on Friday and spend 15 or 20 hours in a plane a week. I was like that, but in a car. So how do you replace those, those hours with something substantial that some, that really is as dumb as it sounds, everybody can see. And, and I think that at first it was just kind of us trying to, have connections and and with each other because we missed each other that much that was that was kind of a, a strange part about it was we're so used to being around each other and, and with people this was kind of our outlet so I, I think that's how it got started kind of a fluke joe was like what are we gonna do you know we got to the eighth episode joe's like what I'm are we gonna do this i'm, I'm still trying to figure out what we're gonna, we're do. gonna keep doing know. this and i'm like yeah and so we don't have a choice yeah we're gonna keep going so um it, it really we created it for ourselves, which is kind of the funny part. And, and in, I think a couple of months we realized that it had nothing to do with us anymore. And it was really a self-serving kind of thing for our industry. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it was cool. Um, it was a great idea on Chad's part. Uh, you know, I, I really wasn't a big believer in it. Um, but I, I think for, for, and we've talked about this on our show in the past is like the, one of the things that was really hard for me. Um, I think a lot of us struggled in the first few weeks, but once I got to like a month, um, the thing that was really hard for me was trying to figure out, um, you know, how to, you know, for somebody that's that's used to being in and around people in meet business meetings and traveling and being such a social uh, environment to, to be able to get some of that back. And that was our thing. You know, it was it was I, I just wanted to talk to my friends, really. And this gave us an opportunity to do that. And at the same time, hopefully provide some you know content and educational, you know, kind of a product that would, that would be serving for the industry. And I think we're like at 64 some odd episodes or 65 episodes. And, uh, I honestly can't believe it. You know, I go, to our, I go to our website and I'm like, Oh my gosh, like I don't even remember doing half of these things. So yeah. 
it's been cool. It's been a lot of fun. We, we, we really enjoyed it. Um, I've got, I think the, you know, one of the things that is the most rewarding for me out of this is that I've got to meet people that I've never would have had an opportunity to meet in my normal day to day, you know, or career. like Jim, like, I mean, Jim's a perfect example. Perfect example. Really. <laughs> I mean, we've, we've crossed so many, um, you know, boundaries that we would have, that, that work or our careers or our professional life would have never crossed. And uh, we've made some awesome friendships with people that I've never even spoke to in person. I mean, I, I have people that, and I sure you do too, Jim. We, we have people that I, I literally communicate with them every single week and I've never even actually met them in person. And I think that that's really a rewarding part for me as far as the friendships go. I've made a really lot of good friends um, that I never probably would have had an opportunity to make. So Absolutely. I agree. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree um, with everything that you both said. The uh, thing that I found about with content creation, uh, live streaming, you know, putting out information and also just having the conversation, a conversation with people is that this is what different industries are really looking for. And, you know, when you look at it, both of you are influencers. Uh, you are influencers in your industry and, and, and your industry that you guys service, you know, it's been through a lot of changes here in the last let's say two years now and you know the same thing on my side as well you know i work in the corrosion and coatings industry industries and uh, and it's the same thing uh, the, the the desire for more knowledge more information talk about these topics and make great connections and that's why the connections for life webcast has been so popular and and it's something that you're both going to continue now, the question I would ask you, uh, as, and then we want to move on to talking about becoming a LinkedIn in, uh, influencer, mm -hmm. is that if those that are, that are watching right now and those that will be watching in the replay, what advice would you have if, as an individual, would say, listen, I want to do what, Chad, I want to do what you do, and Joe, mm -hmm. I want to do what you do, and, and start my own webcast. What advice would you have for them? Chad? I I, mine's easy. Just do it. Uh, my, mine's pretty simple and straightforward. I know Joe put a little more thought into this one because we talked about it a little <laughs> bit. Um, but but mine's pretty straightforward. A lot of people are really scared to do something like that. They're scared to get on here and talk to nobody. I mean, it is interesting. I'm literally talking to a wall. I mean, I'm not, I know you guys are in front of me on <laughs> my screen, but really I'm just sitting in a room talking to myself. And I think people fear that. And they, they shouldn't. It's it's super simple. People love the genuine, you know, people that are genuine. And that's what we are. We're, we're the same people, whether we're sitting behind this computer or we come to you in person. And just be yourself and and put it out there. Put yourself out there. That's all I got. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, my thing would be authenticity. Yeah. Um, be authentic. Be genuine. Be who you are. If you, if you stumble into the first three to six episodes when we started Connections for Life, um, it was pretty raw. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. We we were we had some um, we had some you know that that whole we want to be super professional and kind of be be you know just not who we were. And over time, we realized I, I don't think we realized it at the time, but it just wasn't sustainable. It, it wasn't who we were. So I would say you know as Chad said, just go do it. Put some content out there. Um, what I've realized doing all this is that. Your, your quantity of content in, in specific to the industry that you're trying to impact is the most important thing. Don't be afraid. It does, everything doesn't have to be clean and polished and absolutely perfect before it goes out. Um, you know, we did the first 40 episodes with Chad editing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, it, yeah. I mean, and it, we made it. Yeah, yeah. it. There were times where we were like, mm, you know, but whatever. It was, it was, we were. There was a the time where Joe cursed and I had to figure out how to get rid of it. <laughs> the time. The time. I dare you to find the episode. It was, I dare it was, you. It was awful because I had no idea what I was doing. Um, yeah, it, it's I, really just do it. I was going to say, and, and make sure you're specific to your audience. Yeah. Um, you know, it, don't get on, don't have a guest on or don't talk about things that are outside of who you are or, or outside of who they are. You know, no one wants to come on Connections for Life and listen to us talk about how organic food, you know, that's not really, that's not what we do. That's not what our, our, our target uh, market is. But I, I think um, it's interesting to me that when we interview people, and Jim, I'm sure that you feel the same way and have seen this, is that people are very, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, very concerned about how they appear and, and how they communicate and how they prepare. Don't. 
just just mm-hmm. do it. Just be yourself and be who the people out there get to know when they when when you leave that camera and you meet them in person. Just be that Same. person. My my other one, I will I have one more is just stick with it too, because you hit about eight to twelve things that you put out and you're like, man, this is a lot. And if you can make it through those humps of like like eight to twelve and maybe like thirty to thirty-five, and you, it because it gets substantially harder. It's not like it, it's not like once you start this, it gets easier. It actually gets harder because you have to keep finding more things to do and more ways to be creative. So stick with it too. It's probably the second one. That's good. Very, yeah, very good, very good. In between the second and third topic, I'm I'm going to have a short video. Uh, it's going to talk about you know, uh, you know, basically, you need to start your own webcast if you, if this is something you're interested in. Like you said, just do it. I need to have that Shia LaBeouf uh, <laughs> clip there saying, "Just do it." Yeah, it's true though. It really is. <laughs> What are you scared of? So let's uh, go ahead and let's talk about, you know, what it is a LinkedIn influencer. You know, when I think of on LinkedIn influencers, there are the mega influencers and those are going to be, you know, the, the, you know, the big, uh, you know, the big industry leaders. Uh, They're also going to be, you know, the financial gurus are going to be some of the media uh, types as well. But really for me, a LinkedIn influencer, they're thought leaders, and they come from you know different industries. They might transcend across different industries, um, but these are the influencers that really produce or, organic, relevant, and impactful content uh, to kind of promote out to a larger audience. Mm-hmm. My connections network is roughly a little over you know r- a little over four thousand. You know, I'm trying to get to the five thousand connections. Same. So you know, I'm not a I'm not a mega influencer. But the thing with it is what I find is that it doesn't really come down to the number of connections you have. It's the quality of the connections and also the reach that you have. So the content that you're promoting out there and you're providing out there, it has a multiplying effect because you might have 4,000 connections or 5,000 connections, but those connections have connections. And then there's, a you know, the, the cascading, exactly. It cascades out. So, you know, when, you look at um, influencers. Um, do you both of yourselves as influencers in your industry or cross industries? Uh, I, I'll go first. I, I, it's hard for me to think of myself that way sometimes. I, but, you know, I've been doing this for 21 years, so I have to influence something, I assume. Um, but, you know, as far as the social media side, it, it's kind of happened. It, it, you know, this has all happened kind of by mistake off of, off of our idea. Now we love it. I mean, it's it's like the best thing I've ever done in my entire career. Um, it's tough. It's it's not an easy thing. I, I, I do think we are influencers because of your spread, because of, because of that reach. And I think every time you add a new connection, you're just growing more as being able to put out the, the message or the good word as you would through the industry. I, you know, I don't have as many connections as you guys because I'm clearly not as cool. But no, uh, you're just behind. You're just behind. That's all. So, but I will say when I, I always tell this story too. It's it's simple. But when I started with this, I had, I always remember when I start when we started uh, connections for life. I had 262 LinkedIn connections, and now I have like 3,300. So in in that time period, you know, I've grown you know uh, 3,000 contacts, yeah. right? Um, which is which is awesome. As far as being an influencer, no. Uh, I don't feel like I am because I, we don't, I guess for me and maybe being in sales, we, we attribute our success differently. Like there's markers. We can see those types of things. We sell a product, we receive revenue. That's kind of how it works with this. I don't really always know who, what the, what the broader audience yeah. is. And, and, and no, I, I don't necessarily feel like it, but I hear it all the time. You guys are influencers or you, you know, you have the ability to, you know, the capacity to, 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 you know, affect actions or change or, or, or have opinions that, that matter to other people. So I guess in that capacity, yes, we are. Um, but I, I think it's kind of like one of those things. I, I, I don't want to say it's like being a celebrity. That's not what it's like. I just mm-hmm. don't know what it's going to be like when we go to a trade show or something and we get back out there, how many people are actually viewing this? They're going to be like, Hey, I saw your show. You know, we get little bits and pieces of that here and there when we do travel and it's kind of awesome, but I don't know. I don't know if anybody's even watching this. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, That's exactly right, Joe. I mean, some of the things I think that I think you pass up your little self a little there, Joe, on that. I mean, we've put out two, two essentially what we call the up, up, 
Upsco Expo. I haven't said it in a long time. You can tell I was a, I practiced that for weeks. Um, but we put out two, two essential uh, free expos. One with all of our principles that that we drew in. How many people did you draw on them to that? Seven hundred. Seven hundred or so. And then we did one based on solely on corrosion. And we had experts from the industry and really didn't talk about products at all. Um, and kind of put out our little own uh, our own corrosion thing, and that was extremely successful too. So I feel like those things that we're doing make us more of that that quote influencer side so yeah we had 3200 yeah. registered for the corrosion show that's, wow. pretty wild. that's impressive that's you awesome. know, the, the other thing too i think what it comes down to you're, you're putting content out there you also have to make sure that you're you're liking and you're sharing other content from other creators as well mm -hmm. and that, that's what with linkedin i was you you know everyone on there has a profile they are potentially a, a creator of content information knowledge and all this other stuff and uh you know uh, like, share, comment. Um, you're posting your content out there. And I like to survey as much as I can. Uh, and then also just go look at my posts. What works, what doesn't work. Uh, you know, I just started putting out LinkedIn stories. You know, that still has a way to go. Not everyone's utilizing it. Right. Uh, and then the other things to look at are going to be to your point where you said when you have an, a, maybe you could create a special event and you have, over 3,000 people register for it. You know, that that is an amazing uh, outcome. Uh, when I did travel, well, let's say when I was putting out content before I started really doing my YouTube channel at the end of 2019, you know, people would say, hey, I like your post that you're putting out here. You, you know, I was writing articles. I was doing things like that. And that's really what kind of inspired me in a way. And then, you know, you, you know, Tats talk, you know, my friend Tats, you know, seeing what he was doing. And I was like, I need to do that because that, that's my passion is communicating to people, talking with people, um, getting information out there. And it's all about engagement. I really like the engagement that this platform, especially LinkedIn, has provided me and the both of you and, and a lot of others as well. We really made it our sole, our, our sole platform I, for, for more than a, more than a couple of reasons. I think one was I don't think at that time when we started, we could have managed it anymore. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't think I really don't. I mean, YouTube and YouTube and LinkedIn were a lot as it was, but you know, it's really taken off with LinkedIn. We we've had so much success, especially now. You know, Joe peppered them until they gave us the LinkedIn Live stuff well, too. Wait a minute, I want to get a little tire I know. pump. Tire pump. I, know. Yeah, I was there. going. That's kind of how I met Jim through uh, through Jim and James. Uh, James Cross gave me your information because I, I'd been trying to get approved for LinkedIn, and you I was so mad. mad for so I, I, months, months, I was so angry, and um, and 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 Jim gave me some really really good suggestions, and within a few weeks, um, we were able to get that. So we owe you a, a big thank you for that, man. Like I, yeah. I probably we probably wouldn't have been able to get to that point if you hadn't given us some really rock solid advice. So. You know, I don't want that to go unnoticed. That was that was that was great. Thank you for that. And it's helped us be able to grow yeah. and, and and do more things and be a little bit more creative. So, uh, no no problem. I I love helping others. It's a golden rule: do unto others as you want them Absolutely. to do unto you. So yes. I offer offer help and assistance. And the thing with it is, it's it we need more content creators. We need more influencers organically to grow. Um, so let's not make LinkedIn all about the mega influencers. Right. Let's do the grassroots influencers. And that's really what I have a, really interested in, in helping others get to that point. Uh, and again, for me, it's just that uh, in my, especially in the corrosion and coatings industry, we, we need a lot more voices out there. We need a lot more uh, people to step up and to uh, promote the industries, uh, talk about the industries, educate the industries. I mean, you know, currently, like right now, with, you know, all the debate about infrastructure, you know, people are driving on bridges. They're, um, you know, turning on your light. You know, you have all these utilities, but you don't realize the infrastructure that needs to be supported. And uh, it's under attack by corrosion every single day. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just interesting when you look at, again, the different industries out there. And um, especially when it comes to, you know, the oil and gas industry, corrosion and coatings industries, there's still a lot of misconceptions of through the industries you know for example like oil and gas you know we want to go everyone wants to go to green it's not you just can't switch it off because mm -hmm. you don't realize that petroleum is in a lot of our products Never. um it, it's even in some 
some of the stuff that saves our lives. Yeah. So you just can't just turn one off and turn the other on. And so, you know, you guys have been a, a voice for oil and gas and, and you've been really focused hard uh, in that industry. We've yeah, I, I'm sorry, no, Jenna. I, it doesn't matter. Go ahead. You know, one of the things I think that, and I try to do a lot of this, I know that, that, um, you know, that's been my thing is, is the education about our industry is so extremely important. It's, it's not necessarily, um, you know, right versus wrong, um, good versus bad. It's not. I, I think that to be a successful, to have a successful future for many, many more generations, we have to have some type of combination and some collective um, conversation about what's best and what's the best way to get us to the to, to that carbon neutral or, or carbon based zero on market. facts, on fact based. But I just right. There's the, the 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 way that everything is seems to go is it's always um, you know fossil fuel bad, <laughs> everything else good. And, and that's not true. There's, there's the, the, everything that we have, every, everything that we have in life needs energy to, to, to exist. Everything from the wood that we build our homes with to everything, our clothing, our food, everything. We need energy. Energy is the vital main source for everything in this world. And to get that, we need to have really good options and it can't just be one way or the other. And, and I think that I, you know, you'd mentioned this before. And I'm going to go back to it as far as content. Um, one of the things that I've been doing a lot is polls. So I've been doing polls online um, on LinkedIn all the time. I do two a week and they're basically just gas facts, just so people can engage and be able to learn a little bit more about the industry that they may not have learned. Um, you know, how much a car battery weighs for an electric vehicle, you know, silly things like that. But it's just those little bits and pieces of information that people can take away from, with them to be able to have a better conversation and think a little bit more critically um, as we grow and as we move forward as an industry and as a country. And so, that's why you're an influencer, Joe. <laughs> <thank you. laughs> I don't know if anybody listens to it. Now, it's really interesting because I, the first one I did, I, I was like, I'm going to put a poll out there and see what happens. I'll never and forget I, it either. Like, it took me an hour. I had like 2,400 views in like an hour. And I was like, Whoa. wow, you know, I never expected that. I could, I, nothing's ever gotten me 2,400 <laughs> views. So, uh, you know, I, I think that trying to be creative, I'm back to our original being creative and what you're posting and the things that you're putting out there and also allowing people to engage. People love to be part of it. Yeah. So trying to let people be involved in it, whether it be a poll or a survey or something like that, I think is it drives a lot more content than just putting out um, a statement or an article or, 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 or even a, a picture, for example. Um, so I, I wanted to go back to that because we kind of talked about it. I, I agree with all that, Joe. I think one of the one of the biggest challenges, especially in our industries, and I, I don't want to make it sound like it's negative, but the, <laughs> the older but it is the older generations sometimes have a tough time grasping on to to what we're trying to do like you know it's you used to be able to used to buy encyclopedias right your dad when I was a kid if I wrote a report everybody's report said the same thing because everybody had the encyclopedia Britannica and they pretty much wrote it however they could with some separate words but now you can find out anything in four seconds by just saying it into a phone so the the ability for for Joe and myself and you and Ted uh, that's in, in CFL to for us to be able to educate at the tip of people's fingers is I think that's what really that's what really means a lot and I think that's what people have to understand is is now you have to make it at the touch of a finger so that's just my thought. Excellent. Sounded so bad. as as we said earlier, I I have a video I'm going to run here, but yeah, uh, roughly no about two minutes. Uh, it talks about you know um, really starting your webcast. And I think it's important for everyone uh, to take that message away from here that if Chad, Joe, and Jim can do it, um, you can do it as well. Yeah, anybody can do it, hundred <laughs> percent. So ho hold on one minute, guys. I hope that you're enjoying today's live stream. It's great to have guests like Chad and Joe from the Connections for Life webcast. Earlier in the stream, Chad and Joe talked about how they started their webcast and the drivers that inspired them to provide amazing interviews and content. With that in mind, I want to talk to you about starting a webcast. Anyone can start webcasting. It's a great way to market your products, services, or if it's just to help build out your professional brand. For those of you watching this, now is the time to start your webcast. And take it from me, the investment can be minimal and the impact can maximize your engagement, messaging, and influence. Here's some initial planning considerations for you. Number one, what topic or subject matter will your webcast focus on? 
Identifying a topic should be easy, and don't be concerned if your topic is covered by another webcast. Unless you're copying, people are always interested in differences of opinion and content. Number two, choose a format that best fits you and your targeted audience. Will your webcast be an interview series? Will you have a co-host? What will your runtime be? What frequency will your webcast have? Will you release the audio as a podcast, add a live stream, publish a text as a blog? Number three, obtain equipment to launch your webcast. The majority of you watching right now already have the necessary initial equipment to produce video, record audio, and live stream. During a future video, I'll cover some initial startup equipment. Also, on another video, I'll cover setting up hosting, guest outreach, planning, editing, and importantly, marketing your webcast. Okay, now back to the live stream with Chad and Joe from the Connections for Life webcast. Have a great day. We're so back. that was awesome. I Thank know, you. I, I got to talk to you about how to do that. I yeah. <laughs> Can you teach Joe? Because I can't do it. Yeah, seriously. Let me know. We're going to talk after this. <laughs> well, I hope you get LinkedIn Live. I'm sure I can help you do this. <laughs> Just Perfect. kidding, guys. No, no. no I, truthfully. <laughs> so let's get to the uh, focus of the um, live stream. Uh, five characteristics of a LinkedIn influencer. The good thing about setting up a live stream is you, the both of you and myself, we had the opportunity pre-stream to do a lot of work ahead of time. And we came up with five characteristics of a LinkedIn uh, influencer. The, f the first uh, um, characteristic, post original content that engages your connections and prospects. When it comes to, for both of you, original content that's engaging, and you talked about polls and surveys and things like that. What other process do you have in place to come up with the content that you guys put out there? That's a good question. For, for you, Joe, I'll go first, Joe, because we kind of both do it differently. Um, you know, I, I, Joe is very, uh, he's very segmented. So like, you know, when Joe, he, you know, that every day around like seven o'clock or eight o'clock in the morning, Joe's going to put his stuff out. I'm all over the place. I'm like 10 o'clock in the morning, all over the place. And I focus on pictures. I love pictures. I, I go on other on Facebook and, and look for people that posted their own pictures and natural gas blogs of like meter sets and things like that. I give them photo credit when I post it, but they're just almost like ridiculous looking things that they build. So I focus a lot on that. I focus, um, just trying to put out good content. You're trying to educate, right? Um, so my, my, I, I'm not as dedicated as Joe. I will say that uh, to to his LinkedIn his LinkedIn profile. He's really taken it to uh, to the next level the last six or eight months. So he's going to talk. Uh, yeah, I, I think um, as far as original content goes, I, I want to talk about the show a little bit. When we started doing the show, we we if you if you've never watched the show or if you have, you'll notice when you do, you'll notice that in the first like six to ten minutes, we just kind of talk. Um, yeah. about our weekend, about our lives. And, you know, for a while, I was the big push of let's get away from that. Like, that's just too much. There's, there's, why is anybody, no one wants to listen to that. Nobody really. cares, right? <laughs> we kind of backed off on it. We did that, like everybody was like, why would you do that? Like, that's our favorite part of the show. And and what I what I realized uh, about, about episode 15, I'm guessing, 16, um, we did a uh, employee profile survey of a guy, um, Steve Langtree, that has worked at our organization for 20 years. And I've known, I've been with Upsco for, I don't know, 11 years now. So I've known him a long time. And I've worked in the office with him for four years. So, I mean, we had a pretty good relationship. And um, when we interviewed him after the fact, either before or after the call or the recording, he said, you know, my favorite thing about the show, guys, is that like, I feel I got to know, I feel like I get to know you a lot better. And I was like, wow, that's crazy because this is a person that I've known for 10 years that feels like he's gotten to know more about me. And he loved that part of the show. So um, when you talk about original content, it's not just original to, to the industry. It's original to yourself. It's original to, you know, don't always think that just because you like the way somebody else does it doesn't mean that there's not room to do it the way that you want to do it. Um, one of the things that I really heavily focus on, and it's probably to the point of nauseam for my, my people that are connected to me, is that I, I'm really big on like quotes and inspirational things. I post an absolute ton of those. And, and the reason is, is because 
I kind of, I kind of look at it like this. If I'm having a rough day and I see something that just resonates with me just a little bit, it might change my outlook or change my perspective, my perspective. And if, if I can send that to five, you know, five people that out of the 3000 that see it and go, you know what, I needed to see that today. I think that that creates value for people. Um, it's not really industry specific, but I think it's a personal thing and it's something that people can take with them when they go on to the next venture in their day. Um, as far as original content, I think that a lot of that is driven specifically for us by our interviews. Um, I, you know, they create that. We don't really create it. We ask the same standard questions. And I think that the, the uniqueness of each person, whether it be the history that they've, the, of, of, of themselves, their career, um, what they've done, their accomplishments, um, one of the things that I found that was really cool is the shows that we get the most um, engagement and views on are the ones where people are talking about the past and, and the history of, of, of a product, or the history of an organization. Because, you know, I, I've worked with organizations for 10 years and then I heard that story on a recording and I was like, I've never even. Those things blow our mind. When that happens, it blows our mind because we've known these people for seven, eight years. They get on and we, you know, one of the things that were very specific and this might help with that part is in our pre-calls, we don't really, I, we don't let people answer the questions. <laughs> we we kind of go, we're going to give you the questions and they start to tell you. And I'm like, no, don't tell us. I don't want to know. Like, I want to know when we're there. So I get, so I'm, I'm surprised more or less. A real so reaction. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, you get really surprised when you hear a story and you're like, I've known you for seven years and right. I have no idea like that. I didn't know you, I, I didn't know you used to ballet dance in the, in the <laughs> like, I didn't. <laughs> So it's it's just kind of it's just kind of very unique. Um, and as far as actual con you know content, Chad's right. I post a ton. Um, I like to do the polls. And and back to what he was originally saying, the education. I really, really am heavily focused on the education um, of the industry of the natural gas industry, the pluses, the minuses, the and and having a really good fundamental understanding to of for everybody to have a good understanding of what they're doing, why they're doing it, and and the reasons that it's so important for everybody. You know, as I said before, from an energy perspective. So I guess that's the answer in a and, long and, way. Yeah. And that's why you guys are always consistently delivering fresh, relevant and, right. and, and key content for the second characteristic, instead of focusing on, you know, the writing of the articles and, and basic posts and things like that, you know, we identified video. People really want to see, yeah. they want to see your face. They want to hear you um, more so than just reading a post or, or reading a blog that you might have. And then the other thing too is 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 getting involved with the LinkedIn stories, and and that's something I need to do better myself is to okay. utilize those LinkedIn stories um, in combination with what I'm doing normally on LinkedIn, yeah. uh, and then also too taking advantage of the platform algorithm. I think as you get into using LinkedIn, immersed into it, you start to understand what will work, what doesn't work. And what adjustments you need to make, and I think both of you and and Connections for Life webcast has done that. Uh, also, too, I'll, I'll throw out there, uh, you know, Jim and James for, from uh, you know Coffee with Jim and James, the same thing. Tats from uh, Tats Talks, same thing. You know, um, those content creators yourself have really um, took, not say took advantage, but you guys have really learned how to work the algorithm. Yeah, it's um, important. It's yeah. important. I, I, I think. I think, um, you know, gosh, when you first start, you don't know what you're doing. You're kind of flailing, right? And you're just hoping to try to get it right or try to figure out. I mean, and it's 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 silly stuff, like even posting it at the right time um, and, and how when to post it, what time of the day and having those conversations to see when you can maximize and when you're going to get the highest percentage of return on that. Um, we're certainly not expert level by any means. I mean, I, I think the craziest thing about that is this, is that the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. And, and then, and then you start going, whoa, there's so much more behind this that, that we haven't even explored. You know, I always try to say, look, we're two steps into a two mile journey late. And, and, and even though it seems like we've got this under control, I, I think there's just so many things that are still out there for us to learn. That's wild. <laughs> That's just wild. It gets, no, it gets me, it, it really, it gets me every time that, and it kind of makes me mad that I th that I'm thinking about it is I'll go through and I'll be like, this is going to be an amazing post. And I tag 402 people, 17 companies, put a video, put a link to something. And then, if, and then in like a day, there's seven views. And you're like, and then I post a picture of something with a heart, one heart, nothing else. And I have 7,000 views in, in like 20 minutes. And I'm like, wow, 
That's <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's, it's frustrating. It's a lot of, there's a lot of things that are behind that, and I think that as you start to develop more content, you put more things out there, you start to really dial in on what's you know what works, what doesn't work, and and how to maximize um, each post. At least you try to. Yeah, give it, it a go. Is, yeah, perfect. What you guys uh, just uh, really covered, because the, the number third characteristic uh, that we have is telling compelling stories and solutions that help. And to your point, sometimes you don't know what might work, but when you do figure out what works with the connections and also with uh, the uh, users on LinkedIn, uh, then all of a sudden you're right into the, you know, sweet spot and you let it run. Yeah, I, I think I think one of the things that's awesome too is that it's it's like a it's like a weird club. That's what we are. We're all like in this weird little goofy club, like Jim and James and yourself. And we all communicate with one another and say, how did you do this? Why did you do this? And, and how do you, you know, how did you make that happen? I, I'll be honest with you. Uh, you know, we, we almost to the day with Jim and James, with Coffee with Jim and James, launched the show, each, each of our shows, almost to the day. Really? Yeah. And, and we had no conversation prior to this. It was completely random that we did that. And so through this journey, they've, you know, I've known, I knew Jim long before this and, and, but we've met James. I've never even met James in person, but I've never on the phone a thousand or on the computer a thousand times. I don't even know how tall he is. (laughs) He's five one. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I want to give him a hug. I'd be like, wouldn't it be crazy if he was like six, nine, you'd be like, wow, I never knew. Um, But but no, I, I think that that ability to, to, we're not doing it for ourselves. It's not self-serving. It's for a better and greater purpose. I think the fact that we're all willing to help each other helps all of those things too. You know, telling the stories and providing solutions um, to each other. Like I just had said to you before with the LinkedIn thing, I'd still be, you know, scraping and clawing, trying to get improved in LinkedIn Live if you didn't give me a few suggestions that absolutely worked. And for $500, I'll tell everybody else what those suggestions were if you want to do that. Um, <laughs> Just kidding, but uh, but no, I, I I think that that it's that community. We've kind of built this little community, and yeah, we cool. communicate relatively frequently with one another, and and just kind of idea share and and try to maximize each other's content and shows. So once again, you bridged the next characteristic, which is connecting people together, and connections for life. Um, build out, you know, global topic prior uh, prior streams that I had with Heidi Brooks. From VCP Sales. Hi, Heidi, if you're watching. Mm-hmm. Um, we brought people together. We That's what we do. And um, we find a lot of enjoyment in that. And I think that's the other thing about being influencer. Uh, it's not self-serving. You're not trying to say, look at me, promote me. I'm, I'm special. It's just that, listen, I really want to bridge us all together. I want to connect us all together. Um, when you focus um, for your content, you know, what type of connection says has your webcast brought about? Uh, I, I'll give you my, my first example that goes right back to Jim and James. Um, last year, not too many people knew it, but we actually were like the first people to host a game show on through Southern Gas Association's r- virtual expo or their conference. And we hosted like, let's make a deal uh, with variations. I had like a thing set up in my, it was, it was just a whole thing. It was it's awesome. Bad. We had, <laughs> no, it wasn't. A, it was actually really good, which was weird. We thought it was going to be a behind the scenes disaster <laughs> <laughs> for me. Nobody else had anything. I had all the props. I had everything. Um, but it, what's interesting is now from that we've talked to more people at SGA, and it looks like that hopefully we may be able to do a live game show at their event in October. So, like to me, that's automatically all the connections, all these people that we've talked to, like Joe said, of, of friends that we've made, like Suzanne Ogle from SGA. You know, I've never met Suzanne. I, I've talked to her on the phone, now, well, on the computer now three or four times, and I feel like if I saw her, she'd come up and give me a hug. And that's that's what it's about. It's about that. It's just, I couldn't sum it up any better than Joe did earlier when he said, we've made so many friends of people that we've never met in person that we would have never met before. Never met before. And and I think that's the, the coolest part, and those are the connections. It's just, it's all. Yeah. I, I, I 100% agree. And I said it before, like the friendships are what makes this so much fun for me. Um, the ability to get to meet new people and, and learn their story. I mean, I, I don't know the answer to this, but I'd be interested to see if I went on to um, our, our webpage and looked at each episode, how many of those people I've actually met in person? Well, that's actually I, good. I, I would say it's probably 20%, maybe. Yeah. 
I mean, honestly, and, and it's so definitely eight, less than 50%, 100%. Oh, 100%. Yeah. At least 80% of our guests I've never even met in person. <laughs> One of the things that I think is really mm -hmm. cool and we love to do in our show is a lot of our interviews or the people that we bring on are people that were recommended by somebody else that we already interviewed. You know, the, you know, the, the, you know, who you should talk to, or, you know, who you guys should have on, or, you know, who would be love to do this with you guys. And, and we, I, I'm saying okay. it now. If anybody's listening, if you want to be on our show, just send us a message. We'd if love you to have you. We'll have you. It's yeah. It doesn't true. matter. We've had on a sports agent, a networking person. And part of that is, is back to what you'd mentioned is connections. Our show is connections for life. Um, the reason that we picked that is not that we're really, really smart. <laughs> we are the tagline of Upsco, our, the company that we work for is connections for life. And because we work in an industry where we work um, with products and, and tools and services that connect pipes, basically, um, to provide energy, again, to sustain life, that's where that all comes from. So when we started this, it was just a play on words, connections for life, because that's what we were trying to do and, and is connect people in the industry while we were all sitting at home. And, and it's, that's kind of where the basis for the, the show's name came from. But I mean, you can look behind Chad right there, and he's got just a little collage of yeah. people Very, that we interviewed. But, you know, one of one of my goals we we operate under a, an operating procedure that that gives us things every quarter to to set a goal for every quarter. I made one of my goals last year, probably around this time, to try and meet like thirty new people in an industry that I couldn't see any. Like I couldn't physically shake hands with anybody, and mm -hmm. to say thirty, I think I I I was way low at this point. Like. Joe and I've, I mean, we, it's the connections we've made with people are just amazing. It's been, it's been absolutely awesome. And that's the whole fun of it, really. That's what keeps us going is, is that too. I think the other cool thing for me is that like when, when we did the expos, um, we got to meet most of the people that were on the corrosion expo. I've never met before in my life. I don't work in, I, 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 I've met a lot of them, <laughs> um, but I mean, we had CM Nelson on um, yeah, a good. couple of times and Hey CM and I absolutely like we talked to CM all the time. I'd never even knew who he was prior to this. And and I'm so excited to go out and meet these people to be able to share a meal or shake their hand and thank them personally. But the best part about it is is that when we did the Connections for Life um uh, the uh, the expo, excuse me, a lot of people started connecting themselves that had nothing to do with us. They started reaching out to the people that were the presenters or the yep. people that did the talks. And that for me was a major victory. Like that's how I, that, that was a win to me um, because it wasn't about, and you'd said it before, it wasn't about us. It was about connecting people that would have never potentially connected in the past. It was because of things that we did in a platform that we provided. And that is, that's the big, those are the big wins, the friendships and being able to do that. So the connecting people um, that's, that's, I think why we do this is because that means so much to us personally and professionally. Well, in order to connect, uh, you know, connect people together, our fifth characteristic, and, and it's really very important, is bringing value. Mm -hmm. uh, the content that you create for Connections for Life, content that I create, there's value in that content, and that's where these connections are happening. This is where, let's say, it, our influence is really making a difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Chad, I'll let you cover that one. Um, you know, <laughs> it's so hard to, to pick something and to bring value, right? How do you bring value to your industry? And we've done it and, and anybody else can do it the same way. We don't look, I don't intrinsically have the value, but the people that I speak to and ask questions uh, to are the people that that bring the value. So I'm, I view myself as literally just a taxi cab or, or a train for that person to get to the other person or that information to get to the, to the destination. The fa I don't, I learn as much as most people yeah. not when we interview these people, because I, I, like we told you, we don't, we don't want to know up front. So we learn as we go and you'll see Joe sometimes when we do this because he, he, we get like sidetracked because there's value there. There's value that you're like, wow, when you're talking, you're like, wow, this is awesome. So you kind of bite off and you go down a little corridor that that is even more value to who's listening. So like I said, it's what we do is not hard for what we do. Setting it up is a little bit tough, but we're not the we're not the people bringing the, the value, really. It's it's our guests and the people that we bring on. I think that's my view, at least. Yeah, I think the value lies in, you know, I think the, the, the to do this type of show or do this type of content, um, you have to you have to have something that, that people want to see. 
you have to have something that there's a specific reason that people want to tune in, whether it's a specific person that they're interested in or a specific topic. Um, I think our shows evolved as we've started to really figure that out. Um, and, and that was, I think, post the expos. We really, um, you know, we thought the, the, the premise is really silly, but we sat around and I was like, nobody's doing trade shows. We could probably pull this off. And Chad was like, let's do it. And that, that was it. And that's, and that's really how most of the things get started that we do. Yeah. I have an idea. He says, okay. And then here we go. Um, but, and then he does all the work, by the way. Just for those, he did <laughs> Not all of it. I've, I've given you back a lot. But, but, I, but I, back to the value part, um, we realized that the only way that those shows were going to be successful is if we got the people to produce the content for us that brought value for the audience. It had nothing to do with us. We were just that vessel, as Chad yep. said. We set up the links and put all the. We did all the background work, which was a little bit of a. a, a yeah, but we didn't play. do anything to bring the value. I mean, I no. taught a couple of classes. Don't get me wrong, but not like. I, I guess. I guess what my message is here: it's that the value doesn't have to come from you. When you do your shows or you do your 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 content, you, your value can come from many different places. Bringing value isn't necessarily a personal thing that I or Chad have to say, okay, we specifically need to make sure that we're bringing value to people. We need to just create the platform and allow people to learn, whether that be through an interview, whether that be through a shared article, whether that be through um, you know a poll or, 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 or anything technically. So the value part is kind of a huge thing but I think most people's stumbling point when they when they want to do this is trying to figure out how do I make value? How do I make people want to watch this? It doesn't have to be you don't have to own all that. Yeah, very, very good. Uh, both of you have brought great value to me and others. And uh, next week, uh, guest uh, going to be on the live stream is going to be Heidi Brooks from VCP Sales. Heidi and I are going to have a, a conversation on uh, why build out your social media. Uh, so it's going to be great to have um, Heidi Join me once again uh, on uh, on pod. Or I'm sorry, on uh, live streaming again as we used to do uh, co-host for the global topic. Live. I think we need to get Heidi on our show and 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 you. You know. Oh, definitely. Yeah, well, definitely. yeah we're gonna pull. When are you coming on? We're, we're yeah. asking right now. We're gonna be you. <laughs> Let's schedule it right now. Let me right. let, let me get wow. on my calendar here. Um, <laughs> guys, what a what a great conversation we had. Really appreciated. Lots of value. Great content. In closing out the live stream, is there anything that you would want to leave with the viewers watching it live and also watching in the replay? I just want to say thank you. Um, thank you for allowing us to have this opportunity. Um, I know it's very easy to, to want to you know, take credit or, or say that we've done this and, and we don't feel that way. Um, we absolutely 100% are so very thankful and gracious um, to everybody that's supported, been a part of. And, um, you know, been on our show or supportive of the, our peers, yourself, Jim and James, um, even, you know, Russell Treat. We're, we're working with him. He's going to come on the show, the Pipeliners mm -hmm. podcast. Yeah. Um, so we're speaking to him. So all of those people, we're just very, very thank, um, thankful and feel very, very blessed that you've allowed us the opportunity to, to provide a platform that you find value in. And um, we hope that we can continue to do that. And we hope that as we grow and as you grow, we're able to actually, you know, move the needle a little bit further and start to create even more content that people find valuable. So um, if you haven't seen our show, I know, um, Jim, you'd had it down there. That's our website. Um, it's connections-for-life.com. All of our videos are on there. Um, and if you want an opportunity to learn more or get to know us a little bit better, just Look our names up on LinkedIn. We, we'd love to connect with any and all of you. Um, the more the merrier and the more that we can um, get you things that you find of value, I think we can also find value in the things that you have and learn from you as well. So um, I think that's it. Joe, yeah. does, Joe always does our best sign-off, Jim. He's he's the best sign-offer. I'm going to leave it with, you know, after, after talking to you for 45, 50 minutes, if somebody's not inspired to go out and start their own webcast, I don't know what they're doing. They should uh, just go do it like we started with. Just do it. And if you have questions for any of us, please reach out individually. It doesn't yeah. have to be on here. You know, send me a message on, on LinkedIn or, or, or an email. My email and my phone number are posted on my LinkedIn account. So reach out. If you have questions, you want to talk about things a little bit more or whatever. We're, you want to come on our show. Come on. We're open books. 
Definitely, definitely. And also, too, for viewers watching it live and also in the mm -hmm. replay, um, on LinkedIn, um, you have a group page for Connections for Life. So that's another way to connect with both of you and also, too, with the webcast. Yep. Um, I highly encourage everyone to take a look. Um, you go to the website. They have all the archived uh, episodes. And it's pretty amazing to see where you guys started and where you currently are at. Yeah. And how weird I don't feel any different. Yeah, I'm just, I, like, <laughs> other than I don't feel like I have to go, hello, Joe, good to see you. <laughs> yeah, <we're, laughs> you know, there's really no different. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much. Um, have a have a great day, and I really appreciate this. Thanks, Jim. We yeah. appreciate you, and thanks for having. Appreciate us. it. All right, thank let's you. get that uh, schedule out. Let's get uh, get me on your on your program. That's your next email, buddy. All right, have a good All day, right. guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Thank you.